Good morning. Welcome to another video with a guy and his projects. Today we are working on the 2005 Nissan 350Z DE engine, automatic transmission, super fun car. Uh, today we are working on a P0430 check engine light. Uh, we have a P0430, uh, it's triggering as a bad catalytic converter. It's a fairly hard code. Uh, if I clear it, it comes back within 50 to 60 miles. So <clears throat> I also have O2 sensors. Uh, we're gonna be removing the O2 sensors to replace the cats anyway. Might as well just put the O2 sensors in. No, I do not think that the P0430 code is due to an O2 sensor. I know a lot of you are gonna get on there. Never replace your cat without trying your O2 sensor first. Um, <laughs> more power to you, go for it. Yes, that is a cheaper alternative if it is an O2 sensor. In my experience, every time I've received a P0430 or a P0420, it's been a catalytic converter. Uh, most O2 sensors kind of have their own codes. Uh, in my experience, every time I've had a P0430 or P0420, it has been a catalytic converter issue. Uh, we've done this in my Nissan Frontier. Uh, we did it in the Dodge Grand Caravan. And now this one. I don't think it's an O2 sensor. Everything looks good on the O2s. So we're going straight to cats. I'm not putting in OEM cats. So I do have emissions where I'm at in the greater Phoenix area, uh, but OEM cats are expensive, guys. Uh, the Nissan Frontier video I did a while back, that one I went, not OEM, but it was OEM, uh, uh, what, what you may call it. I met the OEM standards. These ones, I don't believe so. These are high flow catalytic converters from Kinetics. I want to throw their name out there because they did give me a small amount off of my purchase price. So thank you, Kinetics. Uh, I hope these work. I'm not sponsored. They are not sponsoring me. They just gave me a little bit uh, uh, off the top of the price. So uh, they come with gaskets and new mounting hardware. So I'm looking forward to this install. I hope it's easy because we did the valve covers yesterday and that was a pain in the butt because well, I broke some things. Uh, everything's super dry rotted on this car. They haven't touched any of the hoses were so brittle. I could not pull them off. They would snap instead of falling off. So <clears throat> let's hope that this is a little bit easier. We should get started. So let's get started. Oh, so speaking of the emissions. So this is emissions. The guy at Kinetics is telling me that this will not fail emissions. These will not trigger a check engine code and it'll go through emissions just fine. I'm hoping that's true. I won't find out till next year when emissions are due. But for now, we're going to put them in and we're going to go with it. Let's get started. All right, so we're going to open our hood in slow motion. I'm not quite sure why we went slow motion, but whatever. Um, and then I went ahead and I jacked up the front of the car as much as I reasonably could and then shook the heck out of it, looking all kinds of silly for your pleasure to demonstrate that this car is not moving anywhere. Once you're confident you're not going to die by crawling under your vehicle, uh, this is your uh, cat on the passenger side. You've got two bolts on the rear side. Uh, you're just going to bust both of those loose and remove them. Uh, they're not hard on mine, but I'm in Arizona. If you're in the rust belt, these could be very, very seized and you might find it easier to just cut them off, to be honest. But however you get them off, go ahead and remove both of those two nuts and uh, in the back. All right, so now we're gonna have to get rid of this O2 sensor and make sure it's out of the way. This is your downstream, secondary, whatever you wanna call it. I will link these down below for both sides. I don't know what the difference is between passenger and driver, but there is a difference, so two different part numbers. All right, this little metal band, you can actually take the O2 sensor off of. Uh, I couldn't figure that out while I was under the car, so I unbolted it from the transmission pan. Uh, do as you wish, but you can do it without unbolting it. This brace holds the uh, cats from vibrating and it also helps support them because the originals are super heavy. My new ones did not come with a bracket to or a mounting point for this bracket, so I left this bracket off. Uh, if you have mounting points on your new cats, you can probably make do and keep that bracket. All right, so up here, this is the engine side of the cat. Now you've got three bolts, well, two bolts and one stud holding this together. 
well, actually no, they were all three studs. I filmed this like four months ago, six months ago. Uh, it's been a it's been a minute. So for the bottom one, that was actually pretty easy to get in. I just got a ratchet here. After I busted it loose, I switched to a speed wrench, uh, just because I can move more faster that way. Uh, for the top, uh, for the top bolt. I found it easier to go in from here. Uh, the little arrow on the screen shows where. I used about, I don't know, two and a half, three foot worth of extensions. Uh, I'll link some down below for you. But uh, just to bust that loose, because they're studs, you only needed one person, which is super helpful. The new cats are nuts and bolts, which was a pain in the ass. Uh, but as you can see, just bust that nut off and that one's good. At this point I thought there was only two bolts up front and I uh, was excited to go ahead and get this cat removed. Uh, you do that by just sheer force of will and strength and might and you just peel them apart. Uh, that's what the flexible portion is there for so you can move it. That's when I realized there was actually a third stud up front so I just grabbed another two foot worth of extensions or so and took it off from uh, be back at the end of the cat. Alright, so now you can go ahead and remove this. Uh, go ahead and insert sound of victory right here where you see my mouth move and I don't have audio. Alright, so that is the front portion. As you can see, there's one stud left uh, on the header. Uh, that is going to be very helpful later. Here is your equipment. So the new one, because it's a high flow, has way less uh, heat shields. No heat shields, actually. That's the inside of the old cat. You can see how dirty and nasty it was. Um, for comparison, this is the inside of the new one, and you can see how clean. Uh, so yes, it can cause restriction by being dirty. All right, so the old one had studs. The new one is set up for nuts and bolts, which is a pain in the butt. Uh, because there are uh, one stud left on the header side, you will have to reuse one of your nuts. Um, that's where your O2 sensor is going to end up. And there's part number four one, but don't worry about it. I'll link them both down below. So you're going to take a gasket and start with the upper portion. Uh, I kind of hung it on the stud that was left and then tried to hang the bolts through the upper side to hold the gasket in place. So this was actually a pain. Uh, it wasn't the end of the world kind of pain. It was just super nuisance type of pain. Um, trying to get this in, holding it while getting a couple nuts in place. And I mean, it was doable. This portion right here probably took me about eight minutes just to get the top portion <laughs> in. Holy smokes, annoying, but not a deal breaker. It happened. Uh, the back side, put your gasket on there as well and stick your bolts through and put some nuts on. I didn't tighten anything down until all five nuts and bolts were in place. Once all five were in place, I went ahead and tightened these down. Uh, I don't have torque specs for you. I just went as tight as I reasonably could. Um, Obviously, you don't want to break anything, <laughs> so just go as tight as you can and get them in place. And once you've made it this far, the driver's side is pretty much exactly the same. Alright, so now that you have your cap bolted in and you're done with that portion, you can grab your O2 sensor. Again, this is your secondary, your lower, downstream, whatever you want to call it and I'm just going to slide this clip in. Again, if you were able to get it off under the vehicle, that'll still be mounted to your transmission pan. All right, here is your anti -seize. Um, It might be copper, it might be silver, whatever color. Um, the one that came with this is copper. If yours didn't come with any, or if you're reusing the old one, then you'll probably want to put some anti -seize on there. So you're going to stick it in the hole and spin her in nice and tight. Uh, again, don't connect the electrical until after you have this tightened in the cat because you're going to twist your wires all over the place. I used a crow's foot adapter to get this in. They saw all kinds of ratchets and stuff. Uh, if I remember, I'll link them down below for you. And then you're just going to put this in place. Don't forget to clip your wire back to the pan uh, so it doesn't fling around. Just make sure it's not touching anything hot like the cat itself. All right, so we did the passenger side. I filmed it. I hope I got a good film. It's always hard to tell in 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 the in the moment, um, but 
It looks good. Oh, I like it. I'm gonna fire it up here in a few minutes. I don't have torque specs, just a review. These are your back to the old style head studs uh, that, and nuts. This one has uh, from Kinetics comes with a bolt and a nut. Doesn't seem to matter right there. Uh, what I would say where it does matter. Oh shoot, it knocked something over over there. Where it does matter is up here. So this one on the bottom being a bolt and nut is fine. I don't care. That's easy, okay? This one, there's a stud from the factory in the header. That with a nut is good because it'd be hard to get a ratchet up there. What was pain in the buttocks is this one up here. Boop. Now you can see this one right here. So this aftermarket high flow from Kinetics comes with a bolt and nut for that spot too. I don't really know that you could have done anything different, but I think, I don't know if it would have been harder to get installed, but I think if he had put a stud on the actual cat going up, so all you gotta do is a nut, this would have been a breeze. As it was, trying to hold this side with a wrench and the other side with a ratchet from up top uh, and then the engine bay, sucked balls. It, it, it sucked, I had to get a second hand. I could not do it by myself. So I had to get my wife to work the top side and I worked the bottom side. <laughs> um, so I hope you guys are still upright here. I can't really tell. So this is the driver's side. I didn't film it because the process is the exact same. The rear is the exact same. There's nothing different. The O2 sensor is the exact same. Uh, the only difference is part number on the O2 sensor. I really hope you guys aren't getting dizzy right now. This is a different part number. I'll link both of these below. These are your downstream, your secondary O2 sensors. I'm gonna do a separate video replacing the upstream later. Ugh. So the only difference over here with the uh, upper side, the engine side, is it was, it was the exact same, I don't know. Yeah, it was pretty much the exact same. Um, you just had to remove the air box upstairs to get your extensions down. Um, this, I think it was this one right here, the factory stud from the headers. Uh, with the factory cat, I think I just used a whole bunch of extensions and got it from like way back here. Uh, I know I didn't get it in film, I apologize, it was just, it's the exact same as the other side really, I mean, you'll, you'll figure it out when you get involved. So yeah, not too shabby. Like I said, we did take the uh, air box off. Oh. Whoa. Now you guys are super upside down. So on the passenger side, we had a direct shot to that one top bolt this way. On the driver's side, I just pulled this air box out. You just take this off, there's one bolt right there and it just pops out. I mean, you gotta shove it and pull it, but we were able to get a straight shot down to there. You can see that shiny little nut. That's just brand new. All right guys, that is it for replacing the cats. It's a pretty straightforward, pretty easy job. You've only got five, five, ten, ten bolts total. Uh, not bad. Uh, something worth noting, the old cats are much heavier than the new cats. Uh, and I'm assuming that's why there's a brace there to hold the old cats in place. I got rid of that uh, brace. The new cats are pretty light. The new cats don't have a bracket welded on for the brace to work anyway, so it just eliminated the brace altogether. I think if I was to do this again, and this is a uh, suggestion for Kinetics uh, Racing, who builds these up, supposedly. So if I was to rip these out for a different job, or if I was to start all over from scratch knowing what I know now, I would have welded those bolts in just like the old cats have studs for the engine side, going to the header. I would have welded those bolts in ahead of time and then just stuck them in the holes and it would have been so much easier. As it is, I ended up having to get a second person to help tighten down. Not a huge freaking deal, uh, except for the fact that if you don't have a second person, it's a big deal. So I think I would just go ahead and weld those in as studs on the engine side, not the back side. The back side, bolt and nut, totally fine. You have easy access, it's right there. Uh, and if you had studs on the back side, like the only M style, then you gotta sit there and try the exhaust apart to fit. With no studs on the back side, it's easy to fit. So that would be my suggestion. 
If you're doing this job, if you have access to a welder, obviously look into it. Maybe there's a reason he doesn't, uh, they don't weld those bolts in place as studs. Maybe there's not, I don't know, uh, but it'd be worth looking into. That would be my suggestion to at least look into it. Unless you have two people at home, then no big deal. Yeah, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Stay tuned, we just did the valve covers yesterday with my little brother as a cameraman. I did the rear shocks, got a video on that, and uh, if it's not posted, it'll be coming. And Got a lot to do on this car, we got a lot more to go. We got the whole suspension I wanna change up front. We got tie rods, control arms, ball joints, all that stuff's coming. Stay tuned, if you like what you saw, leave me a thumbs up if you wanna see more, hit subscribe, and of course, we'll see you next time.